What's up, guys? Today we're going to talk about Game of Thrones Season 7, Episode 7, which is the finale. Okay, so I'm going to start out by saying that I did like this episode. And the reason I say that is because I know there's going to be some amount of hate in the comments just because I do think this was the worst of all of the season finales of Game of Thrones so far. So it's a good episode, but in terms of finales, it's at the bottom. So far this season, at the end of every review, I actually look at the trailer for the next episode and make predictions about what I think is going to happen. This past week, I actually did pretty well. There was some contention about whether or not the dragon was going to breathe ice or fire. I picked fire and I specifically said it would breathe blue fire because if the two living dragons end up fighting the undead dragon, we as the audience would be able to follow the action more if they were breathing a different color. I also thought that the dragon had to breathe fire because something had to melt the wall or at least a portion of the wall. And that's what ended up happening at the end of this episode. <laughs> Now that moment or that scene was actually my favorite of the episode. It was truly epic. The Night King is a dragon rider, which is fucking awesome. And he just burned a big ass fucking hole in the wall. I had two predictions for how things were going to go down in the dragon pit. The first prediction was how I hoped it would go down. I was hoping that Cersei would lay some kind of red wedding style trap for Daenerys and some of her forces. And we would lose a lot of people. Maybe at some point the hound in the mountain would engage in combat and we could finally see the resolution to that story. Unfortunately for me, it didn't go down like that. The episode actually followed the prediction that I was actually expecting to happen, not what I wanted to happen. Basically, the way I thought things were gonna go down was that Cersei would see the White Walker, <laughs> pretend to be incredibly shocked by it, Jaime would actually be shocked by it, and they would reach a deal on the surface. However, it would be revealed later to Jamie when he's following through on the deal that Cersei has no intention to actually do it. And this would cause a wedge between Cersei and Jamie. Okay, so now that all the predictions are out of the way, let's talk about the things that I enjoyed from this episode. And the scene in the dragon pit, it was really long, but I actually really enjoyed it. Probably for the first 20 minutes, I was on the edge of my seat just because of how much tension was being built with all these characters being in one place at one time. Game of Thrones has always been able to convey the tension that the characters feel to the audience. I was also impressed that you have this many characters together, a lot of them together for the first time, and everybody stayed pretty much true to their character. Cersei Lannister is as intelligent and as conniving as ever. She knows that Jon is Ned Stark's son. She offers to help Daenerys in exchange for Jon pledging to stay out of the Southern War, the War for the Throne. She's fully aware of Stark honor and loyalty, so she knows that if Jon gives her his word, that he will not invade the South after the war for the North is over, then he will have to abide by it. Unfortunately, in the last episode, John bent the knee to Daenerys, which I absolutely fucking hated then. So Cersei decides that she's not going to align with them and they basically fucking walk away from the negotiating table. Just before that, we get some good interactions between Sir Bronn and Tyrion. We see Euron Greyjoy actually get in Tyrion's face and threaten him, which was fucking amazing. But at this point in the episode, it seems like it's all over. And it continues this idea that every time the Starks act noble, they fucking undercut their actual position and goals. There are some funny moments where Tyrion and Daenerys look John in the face and they're like, dude, can you fucking learn to lie? Like, what's wrong with you? You gotta play the Game of Thrones. And John, just like Ned Stark, explains to them that if people in power's words don't mean anything, then nobody's words will mean anything. So after John's honor blows the negotiation, Tyrion actually goes to meet Cersei in her chambers and renegotiate, try and get her back to the table. And this, of course, continues another pattern we've seen throughout Season 7 of Cersei Lannister completely and unequivocally destroying Tyrion on an intellectual and strategic level. You see, Tyrion thinks that during this exchange, he figured out that his sister was pregnant and that he used that to bring her back to the negotiating table. However, in reality, when you watch this scene very closely, Cersei actually led Tyrion to discover that she was pregnant so that she could use that against him. Basically, she let him think that he got the upper hand so she could play him later. And if you were paying attention to what I said during the predictions part of this review, you know that they reached an agreement. However, Cersei had no intention of following up on the agreement. Tradition rules. I always knew you were the stupidest Lannister. So once again, in season seven of Game of Thrones, Cersei Lannister has completely outmaneuvered 
her brother Tyrion, who's supposed to be the smart Lannister. Now there was a great moment in the interaction with Tyrion and Cersei where Tyrion said, if you want me dead, just order your man to kill me. And the mountain kind of draws his sword, but Cersei waves him off because as far as strategy goes, it would have made absolutely no sense for Cersei to kill Tyrion in that room. I mean, Daenerys is there with her entire army and two of her dragons. Now the reason I thought this interaction was powerful was because Cersei hates Tyrion and it would have been the emotional choice to kill him. However, she chose logic and strategy over how she felt. Later in the episode, we're confronted with a similar scenario where the mountain draws his sword on Jaime Lannister. Because Jaime tells Cersei that he's gonna go north and fight in the War of the Undead. We had the setup a few episodes ago of Cersei telling Jaime to never betray her again. And early in this episode, Cersei chose logic and strategy over how she felt, when she didn't have the mountain kill Tyrion in her chambers. So I thought right then and there that Jaime was gonna bite it. But then Jaime calls Cersei's bluff and he's allowed to leave and he's basically gonna head north. I don't believe you. And that's why this episode didn't really do it for me. There were a lot of opportunities for them to actually show that they still have balls to take out a main character where it would have fit in the story and they just chose not to. They just chose to have everybody that we like pretty much make it. Now there was one big character death and it was absolutely awful. And that was the death of Peter Baelish. Now I'm a huge Peter Baelish fan. He's one of my favorite characters in the entire series. And I've been subtly rooting for him to sit on the Iron Throne at the end of the series, just because he's so smart and he's so clever. And most of the events of the series happened because of him. He killed Jon Arryn. He divided the Starks and the Lannisters and basically started the War of Five Kings. However, the way he was killed in this episode just really fucking pissed me off. So I've been criticizing this manufactured drama between Sansa and Arya for the past few weeks. I know a lot of people have been telling me, no, wait, Arya and Sansa are secretly working together to take down Lord Baelish. And while I knew that that was definitely a possibility, I didn't want to really talk about it just because I thought it was a really fucking stupid possibility. We've seen throughout the series that Lord Baelish is an expert at manipulation and an expert at reading characters and figuring out what they want, and then using that information to turn people against one another. So him getting manipulated by Arya and Sansa is really out of character. Baelish is smarter than all the characters that he's around, and the idea that he would get outsmarted while executing a really stupid fucking plot of trying to get Sansa to execute Arya is ridiculous. But that's exactly what fucking happened. He really couldn't tell that the Starks are loyal to each other and Arya and Sansa would never betray each other like that. He also didn't peace out of Winterfell when Bran told him chaos is a ladder, something that he said to Varys in the throne room that Bran should have no knowledge of. Like I know a lot of people don't know what the Three-Eyed Raven is, but obviously there's something unique about this kid and if he can see parts of your past and he's revealed that to you before, maybe don't leave yourself open to an attack by them. I guess what really pissed me off is that I was pretty sure that he was going to die by the end of season 7, but they didn't really develop his character or show him making any clever moves throughout the season. He was doing really dumb manipulation of the Starks, or at least trying to do really dumb manipulation of the Starks, and Bran basically beat him because now he has the power to see all the episodes of the series that came before it. So at one point in the episode, Arya is summoned to the main room at Winterfell. Have my sister brought to the Great Hall. And you know for a fact that she's not going to be the one on trial in this scenario. They even cut to Littlefinger just to show you he's in the room just to give it away and make it more obvious that this is the guy that's gonna get burned here. They state all his crimes and they slit his throat. <laughs> and just like that, one of the best characters in the entire fucking series is taken off the table. No new interaction with him and Varys, no utilization of Arya's faceless powers, nothing. Just a disappointing death in the throne room. Another thing that really annoyed me in this episode is that we got Jon Snow's real name revealed. I know a lot of people are excited about that and they're excited to find out that he's Aegon Targaryen and he's the legitimate heir to the throne, but the reason that this scene really pissed me off is just a basic storytelling function. The two characters that Jon Snow's origin impacts the most are Jon and Daenerys, and this is the third time that his origin has been revealed to the audience but not to the characters that it matters to. And just from a storytelling point, that's a big no-no because what has actually changed now that we know that Jon is the son of Lyanna and Rhaegar, the legitimate son of Lyanna and Rhaegar? Nothing. This was something that was revealed to us in season six, episode 10. It was revealed again when Sam left the Citadel 
and now it's been revealed a third time. But we're gonna have to wait until the fourth time this information is revealed for it to actually potentially impact the story. I'm not looking for things to hate, but it would have been better if they would have cut down maybe Theon's scene where he's fighting the guy on the beach. Then they just showed Sam and Bran meeting each other and then give us a scene of Jon arriving at Winterfell. That way Jon and Sam could reveal to him that he's actually the heir to the Iron Throne. And then instead of waiting for the next season for this information to be revealed, we actually have tension in the next season because John, one of the most noble characters in the entire show, has to decide whether or not he's going to tell Daenerys that he threatens her claim to the throne. Daenerys, of course, now being the person that he's like in love with. I don't know. It just seemed like that would be a better idea. Anyway, that's all I really have for you guys today. Thank you guys so much for watching these reviews. It's been really cool to get your comments back and forth. I know I moved this from my main channel to my second channel and I'm trying to get more and more people so I can build this media channel. And I really appreciate you guys helping me start that out. Expect to see more reviews of different TV shows and movies going forward. But for those of you exclusive Game of Thrones fans, I'll see you next season and maybe somewhere in between when we do some theories. Later.